So, Pete, what's wrong with some classical postures? Well, I think there's quite a lot structurally wrong with classical po po uh, postures. I, I dropped these quite a long time ago, 15 odd years ago. The kind of um, anger style, trick and asanas, warrior poses, warrior one particularly, and the reverse triangle poses. These poses all put stresses into the body that are structurally unhelpful. Uh, when you twist knees, when you shear the spine, when you compress the lower back, uh, you run into problems. It, it, these are fairly st straightforward biomechanical issues. You know, no one thinks it's a good idea to twist the knee. Deep back bends is another one. Think about how often human beings back bend in life. You know, what's the biggest extension movement that human being generally does? Look up at the clouds, maybe throw a stone. Um, extension movements are minimal in, in human life. And yet in yoga we, we um, venerate the deep back bends. Mm -hmm. uh, and for someone who's not genetically given to them, and it is a genetic predisposition, you know, the ability to do them, it's not something you can practice into your body, you hurt yourself. So people who pursue deep back bends wind up getting a lot of compression in their spine, um, causing irritation, arthritic conditions can develop from here. Uh, these kind of things are, I think, um, should be thrown out. Can you show us the difference between the kind of old school and kind of how you do, say, your... Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't want to do a deep back bend, but, you know, um, any, for example, uh, you know, trip and ask the pose. Right? They, 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 these are very classical, these ones, where you're reaching. You think about these kind of movements where the, the body is shearing sideways. Your spine can accommodate those things uh, all the way down to the sacrum. Then when the lumbar spine gets to the sacrum and you continue to ask the body to move, you reach an impasse and you get shearing at the lumbar sacral joint. That's deeply unhelpful. If you have a foot in this direction and you ask the body to turn in this direction, you'll cause rotation in the knee. You can't help but do that. And anybody who knows anything about knees will know that um, rotation into a knee will put strain and stress into a cartilage. They're not good at, cartilage is not good at resisting rotational forces. It's evolved to respond to compression forces. Uh, back bends, you know, they just keep on going back and back and back and back. They'll cause compression in the lower back. Uh, mm. it's, the ability to deepen back bends comes from the thickness of the discs in your lumbar spine. If you haven't been born with those, Deep back bends will simply compress the facet joints, cause problems. The contortionists, if you look at a picture of a contortionist, there's one in my book, um, you'll notice that they have pain in the lumbar spine. The upper spine is uh, hardly involved. And that's, uh, that's something you're born with. You can't practice it, you can't become better at it because it's a genetic thing. So if you, if you venerate these things, if you elevate them and say the best yoga practitioners are the ones that can do deep back bends, you're, you're saying that half the population is unable to do good yoga. That's clearly nonsense. Mm. And I guess from an evolutionary point of view as well, we, we didn't really evolve, I imagine, doing these kind of movements. You wouldn't well, imagine yeah, picking yeah. fruit from a tree kind of over your head. Yeah, or, the, you know. Evolution is a good you know, teacher. I mean, side bending, for example, is a movement that we've had since we were fish. You know, if you think about it, lizards came onto the land and moved a bit like fish. Crawling children move in side bending. It's a... It's something that the spine is architecturally capable of accommodating. We have a neurological pattern of side bending, we have the architecture to support it. So in flexion, if you think about human beings, they have to bend and come up and bend and come up mm. frequently. Yeah, to so, do that every day, to do all sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. So we're deeply adapted for forward bending, and we're really poorly adapted for backward bending. Mm. So in yoga, you should learn how to forward bend. It's very important, you know, it's one of the main functions of a human being. So, learn to do it well. If you try to backbend a lot, you'll probably wind up with a problem. Um, the kind of backbending that may be useful is in the upper back. You know, the, the people, what people worry about is developing a kyphosis that kind of damages hump. But then you have to teach the upper body how to straighten up and bend. You don't have to take it into the lower back. That's a different ballgame. So our interest in backbending is simply about the upper back, not the lower.